Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. We're uh, we're studying in today's lesson. We the title is Faith Transcends Culture, and the purpose is to become aware of how Scripture proclaims God's desire to bring all into a united family. We got a lot of different messages in this lesson today. So, and it comes from two different books. It comes from Acts comes from uh, the book of Romans. So we'll we'll look at both of those verses or groups of passages and go forward from there. We'll start by uh, lifting our song of praise up and we're going to do hymn number 591. 591, Rescue the Parachute. And then we'll do verses 1, 2, and 4 of 591. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in the an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. 
Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said. Unless someone explains it to you. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. <clears throat> the eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his, humili in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak? Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, "Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else?" Then Philip began with the, with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. <coughs> As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Then they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Again, a lot of different messages here. The title of the lesson is that faith transcends culture. Well, we're talking about a big chasm in culture between these people. Number one, we've got Philip, who is a follower of Jesus. We have the eunuch, who is an Ethiopian, but yet has been down to Jerusalem to worship. So we don't know what the Ethiopian's relationship is to God other than he appears to be a believer because why else would he go to Jerusalem to worship? So we have a, we have a believer who is not a Jew but yet goes down to worship the Lord. So we're transcending multiple cultures here. We're transcending multiple beliefs and histories and backgrounds, but yet one God. So the first thing that we're told is that Philip is told by the Holy Spirit to go and approach the chariot. Philip hears this man reading the words of Isaiah the prophet. Now, this man had to be educated, he was able to read, and it tells us in this scripture that he was a responsible individual, that he, was, he had a lot of authority in the government of Ethiopia. He was in charge of the treasure. Again, an educated man, able to read, was reading the scripture. Reading the words of Isaiah the prophet. So the Holy Spirit says, Philip, go up and see this man. Go up and talk to this man. Go up and have an encounter with him. Which he does. And one of the things to note in this is that Philip doesn't just walk on up to the chariot, it tells us that Philip ran up to the chariot. So when he got the call, Philip responded. Says a lot about Philip. Probably says a lot about what we should do. We are probably a little draggy about the response that we give sometimes when we receive the call and Philip didn't hesitate. Philip didn't hesitate to run up to the chari chariot and encounter this Ethiopian and ask him, did he understand what he was reading? You're reading it, but do you understand? You know, we can ask ourselves that. I ask myself that very often. 
You know, I can read reasonably well, but do I always understand? And that's the important thing, is that we hear what God has to say to us through his word. Specifically in this instance, the Ethiopian says, is Isaiah talking about himself or is he talking about someone else? Well, this particular scripture that he was reading, that the Ethiopian was reading from Isaiah, was talking about Jesus and talking about, was talking about what would become Jesus, who Jesus would be embodied with Jesus, but it was talking about the Messiah. It was talking about the person that would be crucified for our sins. And that's what Philip explained to him. That's what Philip shared with this man. He spent time with him, talked to him. He had a, a good encounter with him. That's part of why we come to church. That's part of why we spend time with the body of believers is so that we can learn, so that we can grow, so that we can gain further understanding of what God has to tell us. And a lot of times things we can't figure out for ourselves when we sit with others, when we reread the passages, when we look to references, when we look to the knowledge of other people, we find answers. We, we gain information and we grow in our maturity as Christians. Comments? Discussions? We take the time to gain understanding. We take the time to grow in our knowledge. And it's so very important. Again, we're talking about transcending culture, but remember the purpose of the lesson, to become aware of how scripture proclaims God's desire to bring all into a united family. To bring all into a united family. We're not united because we happen to agree on anything. But we are united on the fact that we are grounded in his word. We are united on the fact that we serve him. That we serve one God that we serve one master. And that's our unity. Again, we can have our opinions about things as to how we render that service to our God. We can have discussions about things that relate to the actions that we take concerning our God. But at the end of the day, we serve one God. And that's where the unity is. That's where we have to be united. That we are proclaiming the word that he says to us. Comments? Discussions? Full <coughs> had experienced God speaking before. And because he was a disciple... He, he had known the presence of God before. And so when he sensed God talking, he anticipated it. And he reacted to it by going to the chariot and being ready to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the man in the chariot. He had known God's voice before and 
he had anticipated hearing God's voice again. So it wasn't strange to him to sense that God was saying something important and that he needed to react to it. Sometimes we can hear something and we can kind of muffle it and wipe it out of our mind because it might not make a lot of sense to us or it might be about something controversial. So we'll just kind of blot it out of our mind. But Philip ran to the voice of God and he felt that he needed to react to it. And the, the man in the chariot actually needed some help understanding Isaiah and, and understanding the gospel and he apparently was a believer trying to learn more about Jesus Christ and he needed someone to explain the scripture to him and Philip was eager and, and, and ready to be about that person uh, explaining the gospel of Jesus to uh, uh, the, the gentleman in the chariot. I think he was an African, and I don't know how he had learned about the, the, the God of the Jews, but apparently he had heard so much that he had actually gone to worship with them. Right. And he, he needed Philip's help and getting deeper into the gospel and understand maybe he was going to take it back home to the people that he come from to tell them about Jesus. But anyway, it seems like he wanted to know more and Philip was right on time to bring that to, to him. And I guess all of us have the responsibility to share to teach others about the things that we know about the Bible, about the things we know about marriage, about the things we know about raising children. There's so much healthy things that we know that we can share with other Christians that can help them to pursue their Christian life. It's absolutely true. And, and, the, and, and you make some good points because you know, we, we're, we're challenged oftentimes before we really know it, we, before we recognize it, we recognize it, before we recognize it as a call from the Holy Spirit, and, you know, we may not recognize it as such, but it is. And, you know, we're put in a position sometimes that we may be a little fearful. We may think, you know, am I equipped to do this? Am I equipped? You know, this man says, how would I know unless somebody explains it to me? Well, am I equipped to explain it to him? Am I able to share it with him in the way that God would have me to share it with him? The only way I can do it is with the power of the Holy Spirit, by leaning on the Holy Spirit to do that. Philip, of course, recognized that because he was called by the Holy Spirit to do it. I have a Bible study with a gentleman that says that one of the things that he wrestled with is how to, is, is, is how to respond to people, to talk to people, to, to, to know what to say to people. And, you know, Scripture tells us, and I forget exactly where it is, I want to think it's also in the book of Acts. It says, don't worry about what you're going to say, because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. The Holy Spirit will give you the words that you're going to say. We get an opportunity daily to tell people who we see Jesus Christ to be. Our definition might not be exactly a definition from the Bible, but it might be a definition from what our parents told us. It might be a definition from what we heard the preacher say at church. 
or the teacher say it's a Sunday school, and that might really help somebody that wants to know who Jesus is, that wants to know should they attend church, that wants to know should they purchase a Bible. It's like, you know, we might know a whole lot more than we realize that we know. And we might be able to really help somebody by sharing with them what we see Jesus to be. And it might help somebody else to discover and to get involved with Christ. But the significant, not the significant, that's not a good word. The, the important thing about that is that what we share is grounded in Scripture. That what we are sharing is from Scripture and not what I think. Not my opinion. You know, that it's grounded in Scripture. That it comes from the Word. And that's where we that's where we see a lot of shortcomings in us as individuals is that we may not be as up on the scripture as we would need to be or like to be. And there's never anything wrong with saying, let me get back to you. If you're in a discussion, think about the people that you've encountered that you've asked a question and they say, I don't know. I'd rather somebody tell me I don't know than to give me a wrong answer. I'd rather for somebody to tell me, I don't know, but let me investigate that a little bit. Because one of the things that I find I've experienced it here in this class. I've experienced it in Bible study. I've experienced it in a lot of different venues and situations that something will come up, an issue will come up, a question will come up. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not, I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure about the answer. But go back and look, go back and explore. Go back and explore the scripture. See what God is saying to us through that question and through his response to that question. We, we need to get it right when we share it. When, when the Ethiopian comes across our path, we need to make sure that what we're telling him about what he's reading is from God's word and is, and is what God would have us to say to him. You know, I've said it oftentimes. You know, if anything good comes out of my mouth in the Sunday school times, you know, it's a result of him. It's not me. You know, the blunders are mine, but the good stuff comes out of him. So, and that's true wherever we are. The issue of being able to hear what's being said to us and hear it in a way that makes us respond and either puts us in action or gives us peace. You know, the, the, the message of the Holy Spirit can do a whole lot of different things for us. It can inspire us to action it can inspire us to run up to the chariot, or it can give us peace. It can bring quiet. It can bring calm to our lives. The world may be churning around us. The world may be in violence. The world may be at war. It doesn't mean that there is necessarily peace in our surroundings but it's peace in our hearts that comes through the influence, the strength, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where we get that peace. That's the peace that he refers to in Scripture. That's the peace that, that Christ refers to in his words. It's the peace that we see referred to in the Scriptures. 
want to move over for just a minute. I uh, don't want to take too much time, but I do want to move into the other background passages of our um, of our lesson. Before I before I do leave that note, I hope I hope you I hope you looked at the lesson itself and took note of the lesson writer's comment about the evangelist. Kind of at the back of the lesson, uh, there was a he made a comment about a an evangelist who had a revival meeting that was a week long and that week long session only yielded one person to respond to the altar call and only one person answered the call to salvation the minister who was conducting the revival the one who was putting on the revival all of that work all of the effort to carry out that revival only yielded one person. He was pretty disappointed. But many years later, he found out that that one person became a renowned evangelist of himself and spread the gospel. Because he had accepted the call of Christ during that revival. So we touch one person. We touch a person at a time. We touch one Ethiopian at the time. We touch one individual at the time. Sometimes we encounter more. Sometimes we can make a broader impact. But one at a time. I do want to touch base on the, the section of the scripture for Romans. That's in the um, it's in the 15th, 15th chapter of Romans, and we're going to look at we're going to look at the first six verses. And it's to me this is this is as meaningful as the story about the youth. It really is. It's a, it's a very powerful scripture. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bear with the failings of the weak. That doesn't necessarily mean that the person is physically weak. It doesn't necessarily mean that the person is not capable of doing certain physical work. It means the failings of the weak in spirit. You know, Matthew talked about the weak in spirit. And that's what this is talking about. Is the failings of those who are weak. It's our job to help strengthen them. It's our job to assist them. Not to please ourselves. Bill talked about it this morning. My goodness, he recited, he recited the the common theme that we hear that we are supposed to embrace that we are supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, and that's what he's telling us here each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build him up for even Christ did not please himself but 
the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Insults of those around him have fallen on Christ. He bore those insults. He bore it all. He gave his life. He walked where we didn't have to walk. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that. He gave it all for us. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. So that in one, with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, said earlier, doesn't mean that we agree on everything. Doesn't mean that we have the same tastes, preferences, and all of that. But when we are together in one spirit under His Holy Spirit, in His name, then we are walking with Him in unity. We are together. We are walking as one. And we won't be deterred. Glad to see Cornell back with us. Glad to see Walter back at church here with us today. Keep on getting better, both of you. We, uh, our Jackson family had a good vacation. Much needed rest. Benjamin has Hope you all have a good week. Cornell. I just saw it when Jesus <coughs> came into the cemetery and the man was possessed with demons and he was cutting himself and uh, he was breaking chains and I think just the presence of Jesus caused him to calm and he I think kind of fell at Jesus' feet and told Jesus, he said, I, I want to follow you. And this guy had been hyper, and he had been angry, and he had been violent. You know, the, the worst street corner you can imagine. And just the presence of Jesus reached his soul, and it caused him to just calm down. And I think sometimes we don't believe that Jesus has the power to calm an angry crowd down or to, to make a, 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 a terrible situation become peaceful. But I think this part of Scripture demonstrated that Jesus clearly can calm the storm down in people's hearts and, and people's uh, emotions. He, he has the ability to calm us down. And we can pray and ask for that. We don't have to suffer in a violent, violent crime. We can talk to Jesus about it and, and, and allow Jesus the opportunity to, to calm it down. It's absolutely right. And, 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 it, and it does. And we hope that it's done so in Chris's life. And we hope it does in our lives as well. And Prayers for not a sweetie. Okay. All right. Well, we lift up Donna and we lift up all of those who need our prayers, those who are not with us. And uh, we continue to pray for healing where it's needed. We pray for comfort where that's needed. We pray that God will be with us as we approach the Ethiopians and allies, that we have the words that we're 
that he would want us to say. And in our closing prayer for this lesson, it says, Lord, thank you for the sacrificial love of Christ that brings us into the family of God. Help us to share this love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.